brought to you by Visiting Nurse Association Health Group, Home Care, Hospice, House Call, and Community Based Services. Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. We're talking early childhood education with people who know, and we are pleased to welcome Cindy Terabush, early child education expert, parenting consultant, author of Teach the Whole Preschooler Strategies for Nurturing Developing Minds. Good to see you, Cindy. Thank you. You're part of a panel discussion we had on uh, um, the word gap, right? Dealing yes. with vocabulary issues, but we're having a larger discussion on early childhood. By the way, define early childhood. Early childhood is defined as birth to age eight. Eight? Eight. Until about age eight or nine, they take in information and learn the same way. That's why it's such a shame that children who are in kindergarten, first, second grade are sitting as, at desks as long as they are. It's well, not how well, they learn best. Hold on, wait a minute. Sitting at that, like, what's the problem mm -hmm. with sitting at a desk? You know, they just don't learn best that way. I think it's true of all of us that we learn from being active in our experience, and, but especially for young children. They add to their knowledge naturally when they're active and they're explorers and they're discoverers and it's how they develop critical thinking skills. And we need to let them do that. And when you sit them down in front of a piece of paper, you do not get the same depth of learning that you do when they're exploring and experimenting. Let's play this out a little bit. Um, the basics, mm -hmm. you know, reading, writing, arithmetic. Has that changed at all? Uh, the way we approach it, do you mean? A, the way we approach it. B, are they not at the core of the foundation of learning for children. Well, no, I think that there's been a lot of pressure placed on that. And especially in the early childhood, the earlier early childhood years, there's a lot of pressure on those people who are teaching two, three, four, and five-year-olds to get these children reading sooner and doing math sooner. But so much of it is developmental. I can't, they can't do it until they can do it. And in order to, for them to be ready to do it, there are other skills that we need to strengthen. Such as? Uh, we need to strengthen the gross motor and fine motor skills. We need oh, to. Oh, you just jump past that. Uh, That's jargony to me. We need to. We need to strengthen their the movement in their fingers in their bodies. Their body movement helps brain development. Um, we need to be teaching them about personal interaction, like you and I are having, not so much in front of screens, so that they get nonverbal communication. How do you teach that interpersonal? skill set, the ability to be in a conversation, to talk, to listen, to take turns, to ask good questions, to be just someone who knows how to engage other people. We have to be conversing with them all the time, at home and at their school. There needs to be back and forth conversations so that they learn that. And throughout the day, so, you know, when a child is playing, let's say a very young child is playing um, and they're pretending, which is what they primarily do in the early childhood years. It's how most languages develop through their pretend play. If you watch a young child pretend, even when they're alone, they're speaking and they're communicating. They'll be sitting there kind of whispering, even if we don't understand it. Mm. So they're developing a lot of language at that stage. And we should go over and ask them questions. We need to ask more than we state. There was um, a study done about questioning and how children ask the most questions. You know, the questions for adults, they tend to drive us a little crazy. Right. But we also don't ask enough questions of them to help them to think critically. What do you mean? When young children, they come to us all the time and they say why, and adults why? get a little crazy. Um, and really we should be asking them why as much as they ask us why, and so to help them to build their thinking. It's so interesting when I think about this. <clears throat> I said this in the round table discussion. Um, I'm fascinated by our daughter Olivia, who's in mm -hmm. that age range you talked about. And so, you know, I've always noticed, and it's actually a, one of the professors at Rutgers, Dr. Maurice Elias, who's the head of the Department of Psychology, Child Psychology, told me this. He said, we often ask our kids, how was school? Fine. Everything okay? Yeah. yeah. And he said, instead, ask your kid, and I often ask Olivia this question and our other uh, children, but Olivia is the one who answers it in a way that really engages me the most. What was the most interesting thing that happened at school today? And there's the conversation that kicks yes. off. Just that little one thing. Yes. Why is that? Why is that question, as an example, so powerful to in teaching engagement? One reason is because the children at that age are so egocentric, and now you're asking them about them. I'm sorry, just children? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we never lose it. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> but we're asking them about them. You know, when a child draws something, not a good question is, um, "What is that?" You get a one-word answer. When you say to young children, tell me about that, or you say to young children, what is your favorite part of that? You get a whole story. And then you can engage in a conversation. We need to be asking them open-ended questions That's from the right. time they're very young and just let them talk. 
The Power of Questions. By the way, uh, I don't often plug books, but there's a wonderful book. Oh, by the way, what's your book again? My book, Teach the Whole Preschooler, Strategies for Nurturing Developing well, Minds. Yeah, by the way, uh, go out and check that book out. But another book is written by Dr. Mary Lee Adams mm -hmm. in Philadelphia. She's a psychologist, wrote, wrote a wonderful book, had a great influence on my work, my research, and, and the teaching I do. It's called Change Your Questions, Change Your Life. Dr. Mary Lee Adams. Check it out. It's all about the power of questions. Mm -hmm. How about this one? Testing. Mm -hmm. Standardized testing. And pre school children, your thoughts? Uh, we should be throwing out the standardized testing through our elementary school. You know, there's so much focus now on the standardized testing. And when I work with parents, I find that they're mostly afraid. And most parents are. You know, we want our children to be successful, and we fear that they won't. And then these tests loom overhead. All of these tests from the very young age. tell us where age. children are at that point, and whether they are on level, and what we can do about it? The best Early way, warning signs? The best way to see where children are is to observe them. Watch them, talk to them, interact with them. It should be intrinsic. Our observations of young children should be from our everyday interactions with them. Sitting, you know, what children need to learn to, today is very different than what we needed to learn maybe when we were younger. When I was younger and I wanted to know a fact, do you know what I had to do to get that fact? That's right. First, I had to wait. Then I had to go somewhere. I had to go maybe to a library. I had to figure out where to look this up. I have two-year-old children now telling me if they ask me a question and I say, I don't know, they tell me to Google it. They know that yeah. facts are in their pocket. They don't need that as much. What they need are the critical thinking skills, the decision making, confidence in themselves and their ability to do that. The knowledge that we're all human, we all make mistakes. And we can teach this? We can, we can by modeling it. How do you teach we a can. kid critical thinking skills, much less confidence? We teach them critical thinking skills by asking questions that will build on their own curiosity. Like, tell me why you, tell me why you did that. Tell me why you see it that yes. way. Yes, what else can we do? <clears throat> so That's I, critical thinking. Yes, what else can we do? How else can we do that? Where do you think that will go? We were, I was on the playground recently with a, a bunch of early childhood learners, and they saw an ant. You know, and they saw an ant. And of course, they just screamed <laughs> and right. ran. And then we started to talk about how the, we are in the ant's home. This is where the ants live. And where do you think they find their food? And where do you think the ant is going? And it promoted a whole conversation. And they started following the ants around. We found tree roots. We talked about how the roots bring the water into the tree. Mm. You know, but we have to be careful. We have to be intentional, intentional in our conversations with children. And that's how you build critical thinking. Finally, mm -hmm. why do you love what you do so much when it comes to uh, children? I love what I do so much, I think because it matters and you can see it and you can see it every day. If I sit and I work with, a lot of what I do has to do with training teachers. Um, and, and when I work with teachers and I tell them, you know, here's an approach or here's a way to talk to the children. And they come back and they say, I tried that and it worked and the children were so much more engaged. You can see the difference that it makes. I want to thank you for what you do every day. Well, thank you. We appreciate it. By the way, real quick question. Um, mm -hmm. One more. As a student of leadership myself, what's the greatest leadership lesson you've learned in your life? Oh, the greatest leadership lesson I've learned in my life is to listen. Neither, to one, really of listen. Are, neither one of us are going to talk right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be the one interrupting. Hey, listen, Cindy, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for everything you do, particularly for our children. Thank you for having me. And those who teach our children. Thanks. Well done. Brought to you by... Visiting Nurse Association Health Group, Home Care, Hospice, House Call, and Community-Based Services. The New Jersey Office of the Insurance Fraud Prosecutor. And by the Russell Berry Foundation.